quiz you on the date. No. I'm not gonna Civil War either. We're, we're good. If you listen to my Lewis and Clark film, today I've been, I've been reading, uh, we gotta, we gotta get the, going back east, I gotta give another call. Testing one, two, three, four, testing. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. Central Bergen defeated the Tigers 64-35 on January 14th. Scotus beat them 53-46 on Tuesday. Now, Nick, you're, you're an expert in basketball, as we all know. Who's your impact player tonight for Once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Knights Center. I don't know if, that, if I'm saying that right. I apologize if I'm not. But he's uh, very athletic. He's going to drive. Um, the Shamrocks do not want him to get the um, He can also shoot the ball off the dribble a little bit. So we saw that in the arms. So he can be effective here against the Shamrocks. Now we have some other topics to talk about in between breaks. NFL playoff picture, Nick. Unfortunately, we were a little off on last week's games. We chose the Chargers to beat the Jags. 
That did not happen after Trevor Lawrence came back from 27 points down, four interceptions, and four touchdown passes. So I thought at halftime we were good, but we chose wrong there. Last week we talked about Nick's favorite movies, top 10. We're going to talk about mine this week, and then after you guys hear my list, you can go into that comment section. Nick will repeat his, and you can vote whose list is better. I think I'm going to have the edge on this one. But and we keep saying it on the stream, but please consider subscribing. We're trying to get to 700 subscribers. Hopefully we can hit that by the end of the school year. So here we go. The game's about to start, and right away I see that Bergen has a size advantage right away. Yeah, the Shamrock's going to be outsized here all night, but I think if they can play, play fast, I think they'll be right to do it. They'll, they'll be just fine. So Bergen wins the tip. Schmidt with it. Five foot ten guard. Went with it back to Schmidt. Schmidt double teamed by Hang and Faust. Brainerd with it. Now Egan. Out to Egan again. Egan six foot four as well as Alec Went, number 15. So two kids that are well over the six foot mark. Uh, mark. It's gonna prove, it's gonna give SCOTUS some problems inside the paint. Looks like SCOTUS is starting out in man. Correct me if I'm wrong. You are correct. Ah, yes, let's go. I did like how that 1-3-1 last week against Battle Creek worked efficiently in that third quarter. And as you know, the points off of turnovers are so important for the Shamrocks in their strive for a victory every game. I, I think they're averaging 11 points now. Uh, 12. It, it, it's gone from 10 to 12 since the last time they were on here. So that's, I mean, they scored 50 against North Banks. So, for the points right there, off your feet. Faust with it, inside against Went. Loses control, it's gonna be night basketball. Faust senior, averaging 7.5 points per game. He's 30% from beyond the arc. Went with it now. Out to Brainerd, back to Went, inside to Brainerd. Brainerd misses the open layup, out to Went. Went working against Faust, tries to draw the foul. Jump shot, no good, rebounded by Colin Pellon, headed the other way of the Shamrocks. Travel called on Owen Lindhorst, so turno early turnover there for the Rocks. with it. Inside to Went, no good. Rebounded and good. That's Alec Went there. Bergen showing a little press. Uh, just a one man. Lindhorst with it, out to Pellon. Faust, got the rebound, out to Hang. It's a foul on Bergen. Fouls on number 21, Trevor Bergen is first, team first. Last game against Battle Creek, the, the refs really let uh, the game, the players play, didn't call a lot of fouls. We'll see how the officiating crew We'll call this game tonight. So Faust draws the foul. He's going to go to the line. 
15 seconds. Hit the line to shoot two, Jack Fox. And with that, we will look at the Cowboys 49ers matchup. Niners are out there, correct? Um, let me see. The, I apologize. The other bracket we were using was incorrect last week. So, finally have a correct one. Yes, it's in San Francisco as Went gets the rebound. Rejected there from Wemhoff. But Went gets it back out to Schmidt. Nozzle with it. So, Niners, Cowboys. I'm going with the Niners. No consideration. The Cowboys look good. Nope. They look good. Nope. 49ers are winning that. I, I think I think you're right. They're but I think it's... I would be surprised if the Cowboys. No, I would be very surprised. I think San Francisco's been looking pretty good, so... They didn't look good in the first half. It's a sequence. That don't matter. Schmidt with it now. Kang guarding him. Cowboys defense held Tom Brady down. How many points was it? I, I turned it off at half. I think it was three or six, maybe. Impressive. 4.49 left in the first quarter. The score is... Two one. Mass substitution for the Knights. I will say Dak Prescott did look pretty good though. It was a, it was a good performance for them, especially away. Lindhorst driving inside, missed the open layup. Rebounded by Baker. Baker. Turnover force there by Wemhoff. Great defense and hustle there from Dawson Pruss. 5'10 guard. Did well to den deny Wemhoff an easy layup. Faust inside. No good. Rebounded by Wemhoff. Draws the contact. Contact going to go to the line. Wemhoff's going to have to have a big game with his size. I think with the size that Bergen has, um, I think they're going to be defensively have to be strong, but I think Jackson Hank is actually going to have to shoot outside on the perimeter there. So that, that's your impact player for Shamrock? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I apologize. With the size advantage Bergen has, if he can shoot the ball, so far, you've been pretty good on impact players, not I would good. say. Not bad. Jude McGuire was the Battle Creek impact player. He had a great game against Battle Creek. Well, here's a post-game impact player. We, we didn't pick him, but he came off the bench. And yeah, what an impact player. For sure. We'll see if he has an impact tonight. Wemhoff misses his second, rebounded by Went. Out to Nossel, working against Lindhorst. Driving inside. Brainerd with it for three. No good. Rebounded by Wemhoff. Out to Hang. Hang racing down the court to Pellon, to Lindhorst. Pellon with it, with it for three. It's good. Cohen Pellon with his first three pointer of the game. Shamrocks take a 4-2 lead. Pellon's had a, a really solid year for the Shamrocks. Averaging 37% from the free throw line. I'd say that's pretty good. What from the free throw line? Excuse me, three point line. Well, I was gonna say 37 <laughs> from the free throw line. <laughs> My apologies. A lot of sophomores on this starting lineup for the Shamrocks. The future 
sure does look bright. We'll see how the second half of this season progresses. Skoda sitting at the, the 14th spot of power points. Talking with Coach Maracek. He was hoping that the Skodas could get into that 12 to 10 range to hopefully get a good draw after winning. Hopefully they went through their sub-district to get a good district matchup. They have conference next week, though. Yes, indeed. Uh, at Boys Town, I believe. Concordia is a part of that. Yep. Phenomenal performance by that one kid that came here in early December. Nine three-pointers. I was actually not able to see that. So we'll see if the Shamrocks may get a closer game with them in conference if they end up playing them. Turnover there from Hang. Foul called on Hang. Correction, foul was called on Faust. Yeah, I think the, the boys are going to the conference as the two seed. Concordia, obviously. GICC's in that tournament as well. Close game Shamrock's had with them in early December as well. Cross for three, no good. Rebounded by Mason Roberts. Out to Pellon. Pellon driving inside. Nice move from him. Oh, that's a very nifty finish there for Cohen Pellon. Shamrock's now up by one. Cross working against Roberts. Out to Nozzle. Pump fake driving inside. Athletic move there from Nozzle. Your impact player on the Bergen side. So 2.37 left in this first period. We're all tied up at six. Owen Lindhorst checks into the game. Jackson Hank checks out as well as Blake Lemhoff. Maybe give this video a thumbs up on YouTube. Means a lot to our marketing department here at SCOTUS. Pell on with it now. Some good early points for the Shamrocks. Nozzle not happy about that call. Nozzle averaging 13 points per game, senior. Four-year starter for the Knights. Lindhorst with it. Pick up that now Faust with it. Oh, great pass from Pell on there. Roberts inside, travel called on the senior. So with that, the second matchup, Eagles-Giants on the NFC side. I think momentarily last week, I was thinking the Giants was gonna win that game. Then I changed my pick, but good performance from them. The Vikings kind of had a rough game. Good performance from Daniel Jones, really. Uh, but I think Hertz has a bump shoulder. He's not 100%. Uh, but I still think the Eagles, I think the Eagles, if they stop Saquon Barkley, I think the Eagles will win that game. Agreed. So we, we have the 49ers and the Eagles in the NFC Championship game. Pruss with it. Great pass inside. Rebounded by the Knights. Schmidt with it. Missed the jumper. Rebounded by Wemhoff. Headed the other way is Owen Lindhorst. A minute left in the period.
Missed layup there from Lindhorst. Brainerd with it, now Schmidt over to Pruss. Great defense there from Faust. Skoda's gonna maintain possession. What are you seeing so far from the uh, Shamrocks? And really defensive quarter so far. It has been, just like the girls game was, but I think um, they're doing a good job so far holding their own against the size. Um, there's gotta be uh, more careful with the ball. We'll see how much damage the Shamrocks can do on the turnover margin. Turnovers, or uh, points off of turnovers. Great shot there. Cohen Pellon, under 10 seconds now. Nozzle, charge called against Nozzle. Pellon really did a lot there in the last 10 seconds. Scored a quick three, drew the charge. And that was in the scouting report. Draw a charge. Well done from the sophomore. Under 10 seconds left in the first quarter. That really gets some momentum going early in this game. The Shamrocks not a very good second quarter team according to the stats. We'll see if they can change that tonight. They had it so far a great first quarter. Really, yeah. It, for the most part, it has been a good first quarter. They've taken a few questionable shots, but I think to get the nerves out. But. Both teams playing extremely hard. Under three seconds. Pellon tends to draw contact. End of the first quarter. Shamrocks nine. Archbishop Bergen 7, I'm your host Ted Berenger, my partner in the movie nights, Nick Zuha. We're going to take a 30 second timeout. We'll be back. I'm Ross Zolkowski. I'm a superintendent for Beerman Contracting. Got a good group of guys to work with, enjoy coming to work every day, seeing what we can get done in a day, trying to learn something new. I've been here for 19 years and I really don't know what any other jobs like. We can do everything from the ground up. We got in-house in engineering. We can throw a building together for you. Put the concrete, put the footings in, put direct to steel, you know, do all the finished carpentry work. Point A to point B. Spearman Contracting, the professional choice. You discovered your family was about to get bigger. To the very first time you heard that tiny heartbeat, to your water breaking, to the moment you held your precious newborn in your arms. We've been here for you. Columbus Community Hospital. Welcome back to the Dowd Activity Center. I'm your host, Ted Ferringer, my partner in the booth tonight, Nick Zuha. So coming up and on the next time out, I'm gonna tell you my top 10 favorite movies. Nick still has his list from last week. So we'll compare and contrast. And then we'd like to see what you think of our favorite movies of all time. I really saw, I think I only saw one movie on your list. Yeah. So we're gonna have a really different, different spread between the two of us. Skoda's going to maintain possession. McGuire in the game now. Hang with it to McGuire. McGuire gets past Nozzle. Travel on the junior. So Egan and Nozzle both playing the two fouls there in the game. McGuire averaging two points per game but made a big impact against Battle Creek last Friday. Schmidt with it.
great defense by Jack. Egan really working hard to get the two points, but good defense from the senior. Now Bergen's bringing out the press. Lindhorst with it, out to Faust. Back to Lindhorst. Now McGuire with it. What's SCOTUS looking for? Well, it looks like that Bergen's actually in a 2-3 now. So I think, looks like they're in three game. They're trying to get into Jack and Max if possible. And you got Jude running baseline. For Jude that has shot an open right shot. There. No good. Too strong for the junior. Schmidt headed the other way. Three pointers, no good for Brainerd. Now hang with it. Lindhorst, no good. Hang drives into that little opening opened up in the night defense, and Hang gets a nice two pointer there to extend the lead to four. Brainerd with it to Schmidt, over to Nozzle. Scotus in a 1-3-1 now. Nozzle for three. Got it. What would you say are the weaknesses to a 1-3-1 defense? Um, I think if you swing it fast enough. Which they did right there for a nice three-pointer from Nazo. You got either the three-pointer or you also got the, a dump into the post. And then it, if a team's running 2-3 like Bergen is, what would you, how would you go about defeating that formation? You want to get to that, you want to get to the nail is what they call it, with the middle of the paint uh, right at the free throw line. So you get the defense to collapse, and then you can get a kick-out shot, maybe for three. Or... McGuire had an opening, couldn't capitalize on it. Three-point attempt there from Egan, no good. Schmidt with the rebound, out to Pruss. Pruss for three. Pruss, Pruss, three-pointer there from Dawson Pruss. Pellon with it, driving inside, left-handed layup, no good, but draws the foul. We'll see if the Shamrocks can kind of open it up after the end of the, at the end of the second quarter, like the girls did earlier this evening. Momentum so key headed into halftime. I don't want to jinx it, but I think we have an undefeated record announcing. Yeah, you shouldn't have said that. Okay. I... Nozzle with it. Out to Pruss. Pruss for another three. No good. Rebounded by Pellon. Pellon. Loses the ball momentarily, recollects it. McGuire with it now. Pellon averaging 2.8 rebounds per game. Lindhorst out to Pellon, but it was a bad pass. Shamrocks have done well in the last two possessions with the 2-3 defense of driving in. They have, and that's how they got in their points. Jackson with the floater, and Cohen got to the line, getting in the middle there. We'll see if the Shamrocks can continue to be aggressive pertaining to driving. And Jackson Hank really does love that floater, so if he can get in the middle, it's not going to be good for the Knights, but... 
4-10 left in the first half. Cross tries to get it to Egan. He stepped out of bounds though. And with that, the third matchup in the NFL playoff picture. Bengals, Bills. It's at Buffalo. Bills, Josh Allen's gonna win that. It's gonna be a really close game. Game winning field goal. The Bills are gonna win. I'm really rooting for a Bills Chiefs rematch in the AFC Championship. I I think that or not AFC Championship. I believe that was divisional. Yes, it was. Yes. I believe it's all going to be based on how Josh Allen plays. But who did the the Bills played who first round? The Dolphins. The Dolphins. I just feel like. I think the Bengals can. No. I, yes, I think the no. Bengals can. They got three wide receivers on that team. The Bills struggled with two last week. So we encourage you to get into the comments, send us, send us some suggestions. And with that, let's start off with our my list. Okay, number one best movie ever made, Forrest Gump. That's your number one. That is my number one. I'm not disagreeing, that's a bad movie. Amazing it's movie. It, it's just, it has everything in it. It really does. It, it's meant for all ages. Anyone can watch it. And then really, I didn't really number the rest of them. I just kind of have a, a grouping of them. Wedding Crashers. That's a good movie, but I don't think it's a top ten movie. That is a really funny movie, though. Step Brothers, Dumb and Dumber. Have you seen Gladiator? I have. That's a good movie. Great I've seen movie. All of those movies. Rudy's a good movie, although I don't know if it's top ten. But if I'm walking by and my brother's watching it, I'll sit down and watch it for a few minutes. Never really got into Star Wars or anything. That's just so I just can't really relate to when you have. I don't know, what was your number one? My number one? Yeah. Uh, Batman, The Dark Knight. And the, the Marvel stuff, I just haven't really gotten into. I, I saw the Spider-Man uh, No Way Home. Batman's not Marvel. Right? What is it? It's DC. Okay. Well, whatever. But three-pointer there from Nozzle. And Bergen on a little run here, up by five. Oh yes, Saving Private Ryan, good movie. I have to agree. I think I only said five, so I can start adding some in here. Saving Private, Saving Private Ryan, um, Patriot. Have you seen Patriot? Good movie. I don't know if I have seen Patriot. If you haven't seen Patriot, that is very sad. It, Hey, what are you doing tonight? We should, we should watch it. Hey, have you seen Jason Bourne? No. Jason Bourne. Yeah, we, you saw it that one time. Jason Bourne. Yeah, we watched it at Bowden's house. I don't believe I was okay. at that one. No. Um, Jason Bourne's a great series. Yeah, I'm kind of rounding out my ten. Get your list out. Maybe repeat it. But I, th I think I, I won this. I think more people are going to like the movies that I said. 1997. Oh, that was 11. That was a, No, that was 10. 1997 was 10. You, well, 19, you mean 1917? Yeah, sorry. 1917. Okay. Um, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Point Break. Okay, I have to pause you. Braveheart. I forgot about Braveheart, too. So, no, I'm adding on, but... Yeah, Mel Gibson's an excellent act actor. Go ahead. The Social Network. Olympus has fallen. I've never. You would like that one. Heard of that ever? Nice two-pointer there from Max Wemhoff. Max is averaging 9.2 points per game.
yells for travel from the SCOTUS bench, but the refs don't call it. Good pass there from Frost, but it's going to be a foul on Pellon. I think I would have to agree with the travel back there. Especially the he lost of his dribble. And his dribble. they slid his foot. You know. The amount of travels they called tonight, I thought for sure. So, quite a bit of fouls, as you said, compared to that Battle Creek game. We, we really didn't see any. For sure, yeah. Six fouls called on each team. It's great. Finish. Nice finish there from Cross. So we talked about holiday movies, and you said Home Alone. I don't know if I'd put that in my top ten, though. It just depends on the season. No, no. I think someone said in the comments, Elf. But it's just... As a top ten movie, or just... Yeah, just as a top ten, but I, I it's know. hard to watch outside of the Christmas season. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Black Hawk Down's a good movie. Have you seen that? Yeah, that's a good movie. See, all these suggestions from the comments in me are going to completely change your list by the end of the night. No, I'm, it's not going to change my list. It's not easy to make not a even, top ten Not list. even one? It's not... We can't add one movie in there? I, it, it's too hard to make a top ten list, in my opinion. Yeah. There's so many movies out there. Makes I mean. sense. So, we talked about movies. What are you reading right now? Um, I'm reading actually nothing at the moment. What were you reading before? Because we we're all doing an English project. Uh, Lord of the Flies. Good book. It, it, is, it is a decent book. I would highly recommend Undaunted Courage by Stephen Ambrose, Lewis and Clark Expedition. If you're into that stuff, the history stuff, that's a good book. Do you read a lot or not really? I do not read, no. no not really. I'm a, I'm a big TV show guy. But oh, yeah. I mean, throw some uh, TV series out there, some TV shows. Oh, I've watched uh, The Arrow. Um, Never heard of it. It's on Netflix. Uh, let's see. Designated Survivor. Mr. Brockhouse loves that show. Is it good? It's a good one. It is. Good I'm gonna have to check that out. I watch NCIS, Los Angeles, the normal one, all the, all those. But have you seen Modern Family? I've seen episodes. I've never seen the whole show. I haven't seen the whole show, but it's it's a good it's a good little series if you just want to sit down for like 25, 30 minutes. Friends and The Office. Good yeah, ones. I like The Office. Never seen Friends. Haven't seen it. Seen a single minute of Friends before. Really? No, but I, I think The Office is probably the funniest TV show ever made, in my opinion. But looks like so, some is, people despise that show. Man. It's crazy to me. Scotus back in the one three one. Three pointer there. Brainerd with it. Looks like we have a new face in. It's Bowden Yedlichka. Under a min minute left. Wemhoff attempts. A floater no good. Hang for three no good. Rebounded by Nozzle. Nozzle headed the other way. Taking on Lindhorst. Out to Brainerd. Now Pruss with it. Inside to Wendt. But he's going to be flagged for an offensive foul. So Scotus is going to take possession. They're down by eight. Really, the physicality I can kind of attribute to that deficit so far. For sure, yeah. It's starting to kind of 
leak its way in to impact this game. The 2 3 really holding strong for Bergen down the stretch here. Yeah, and I think, I think that Scotus is going to definitely come back out in man. I mean, they're just. Bad pass there from Hank. Cross headed the other way. Misses the layup. Foul called on Yedlichka. Two shots for Pruss. So I think Scotus is going to come back out in man because they're just getting too many threes off of that 1-3-1. One, one. Second quarters are still troublesome for the Shamrocks, but they really come out firing in the third quarter. Third quarter against Battle Creek was excellent at the end of it. And the Humphrey game in late December had the same pattern. So, Along with the Lakeview game. And the Lakeview game. They're down by 13. Came back in that game as well. So they're down by 10 here. Let's see if they can get some points before the end of the half to just make this deficit a little bit more manageable. Lindhorst with it to Hang. Under five, Hang working against Schmidt. Working inside, a little floater there. Hook shot and it's gonna be 28 to 20. Bergen leads by eight points and Hang did a great job driving in, finding the, the soft spot in that two, three defense and Shamrocks are gonna go into the half down by eight. Now I had word that Coach Ritter was gonna come up here, the girls coach at halftime, but he seems to be missing. We'll see how that turns out. Oh no, he's sitting right there. Oh. Well, this, this might be an interesting conversation. This might be. But we never, we oh, never here finished. He here he comes. Oh, here he comes. Nick, my headset over yep. to him. So it looks like we're trading co-hosts here. Nick Zuha to Coach Ritter. Yeah, it's, it's hot. Yep. How you doing? Doing really well, Ted. So, I just want to, just real quick, oh. tell you guys what a great job you do. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're very uh, lucky to have you guys, to, you know, color games and, uh, you know, do it with such passion and enjoyment. Well, we're going to start this off maybe a little bit differently. NFL football playoff picture. Second round, Eagles, Giants. Who do you have? You know, I don't I don't watch a lot of NFL. I mean, but... Um, but I got to go with the Eagles, right? Like, they got to buy for a reason. Yeah. They got to be good. They rested, right? They're ready to go. Nick was worried about Jalen Hurts, but I think the Eagles will, will be fine. So... Yeah, they don't have Eli anymore to do all the magic, right? So they should be good to go. Cowboys 49ers. So I got to go with the Cowboys. Uh, I picked them to go all the way to the no. Super Bowl in my family. You know, no. I think it's Dak Prescott's year, man. He's not turned the ball over. He's playing really well. Uh, yeah. That, that, nope, it's going to end right there. Thank you, John. So, you know, you watch 49ers play, they're really good, but that purity, he takes a lot of risks. So I think it's going to catch up with him, right? He throws a lot of balls, they're questionable. I think tonight's, or the, whatever, whenever they play, is the night that they, uh, you know, he pays for it. Brock Purdy's the new Tom Brady. Give him, <laughs> give him 15, 20 years, and I think he might be the, the next GOAT. And he'll so. still be younger than Brady at that point, so. Yeah, how old is he now? I don't know, he's a rookie, so 23. So he's pretty young. Yeah, so we disagree there. I, the 49ers are going to win that game. You're, you're just on. I mean, I, yeah, I, well, I could pick the 49ers because somebody else did my family, so I had to go with the Cowboys. Bills, Bengals. So I'm going to go with the Bills because my neighbors are really good. Uh, he's a huge Bills or Bengals fan, so I just got to stick with him. My son's got a Bengals jersey, so hey, why not? Wait, so you're going to go with who again? I'm going to go with the Bengals. Oh, I'm going to go with the Bills, All right. Josh Allen. He can't. No, he's gonna turn it over. No, he won't. Oh, okay. Yes, he will, but he's gonna win. Okay. So we got a lot of differences here. That could be pretty fun. I know. I, so the only thing we agree upon is the Eagles, <laughs> Chiefs, Jags. Uh, I got a Jaguars fan at home. No. They went to Waffle House afterwards. They're building some team connections. Right. He was really excited about it. It's gonna be. It's gonna be the Jaguars, man. Disagree with you there. So we disagree on three out of four. Now let's talk about some basketball. You guys headed into halftime. 
up with a small lead, but what do you think the defense did well to hold the Knights to only 17 points? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is uh, they're really athletic and they really do a great job driving to the rim. Uh, and so we did a great job of keeping everybody in front of us. Um, you know, I can't think of a single layup that they got. Uh, they had to shoot outside jump shots all night, so we did a really good job with that. And then rebounding. Like, I don't know if they got a second chance point or even an offensive rebound. And so we do those two things really well. We have a great chance to, you know, to really compete on that defensive end. And then you guys, I mean, what was the message at halftime? You got some late shots there in the first half to kind of get some momentum, but what was the message to the girls? Yeah, I mean, we just, again, had to keep rebounding, had to keep playing great defense. We had to keep that energy and enthusiasm up. And then, and then secondly, we, we had to find ways to score, right? We had a, some uncharacteristic turnovers in the first half, and we didn't have maybe as many opportunities to score as we would have liked in that first half. And so we did a great job in the second half of eliminating those turnovers uh, and finding shots at the rim. And, but our kids get good shots, man. We make them. And uh, that was happening in the second half. So you're headed. This is the second half of the season. What do you think are your team's strengths that will propel you guys, hopefully, to your first state uh, tourney berth since 2018? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we're right there at that point where, where that's going to come in and matter. Uh, number one is just, just team chemistry, team unity, uh, togetherness. Um, our kids really want to be good. They really want to get better. Uh, when you have everybody rolling the same direction, it really matters. Uh, we hang our hat on great defense, right? Like that was kind of example tonight. Uh, whether we score or not, like that, you know, doesn't always happen in anybody. But if you play great defense and you work really hard, uh, you'll have a chance to run at the end. So we're going to hang our hat on defense. Anyone, any specific player that you thought had a good game tonight? Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. You could mention probably everybody. Uh, Malaric. Their guard is really, really good. I think her dad's the, the Bergen coach. Um, long arms, athletic. Uh, and Kaylin Dearman had the job to guard her most tonight, and she just did a really good job of keeping her out of the paint. Um, but that being said, our team also played great defense. Uh, Emma did a great job of handling the pressure, um, and so we're really proud of her as well. But, hey, it's a team win, man. We help each other out, and uh, we did that again tonight. Well, good luck on the uh, rest of the journey. Hopefully we can do this again, interviewing you at halftime. We'll We'll have a different topic to talk about, but first, before you leave, favorite movie? Yeah, I mean, my kids ask me that all the time. We're gonna go with Cool Runnings. Uh, I love the underdog story, right? It's a great, uh, it's a that, great message. I, I like right? the movie. Yeah, it's a great message, right? And uh, yeah, we watch it as with our family, and and we talk about it. So I'm gonna go with that one. You, so you, I'm gonna read some of Nick's movies off. Let's see if you know even <laughs> some of. I don't. I, I knew one of them. Okay, The Dark Knight. Yeah, The Dark Knight. That's a Batman movie. Uh, That's not bad. Star Wars: Revenge of the Sith. So I definitely know Star Wars, but I couldn't tell you any of the other ones. So I don't know any specific one. Avengers: Infinity War. You okay. Familiar with that? So yeah, I got a son that likes Avengers. I don't think I watched the whole thing. So they're like four or five hours long, I think. But I I do I'm familiar with it. Top Gun: Maverick. Did you end up seeing that movie? So we didn't go to the theaters, but we did watch it at home. So, and yeah. my kid actually went as uh, Maverick and Goose for Halloween. So, yeah, wow, that, that was a bad impact. Yeah. Olympus has fallen. Uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I've watched that one. I'm trying to think. There's a lot of them with the White House, right, where there's terrorist attacks. But yeah. The Social Network. Yeah, I don't know that one, man. That was number eight. That's your eighth favorite movie, then. Okay. Point Blank. Break. Is that like with Keanu Reeves? No. Then I don't know that one. So, so far you know seven of them? Yeah, I only knew one of them. And Captain America, the Winter Soldier. So, yeah, no idea. it looks like you're more cultured than me. But, hey, thanks for coming on and talking with us. Man, it was great. And, again, we appreciate you guys doing this. So, keep up the good work. And that was Coach Ritter for you. We're going to get the notorious Nicholas Zuha back on. So Nick, it looks like your movies weren't that bad off after all. I told you, it was just you. Some of his picks were a little questionable. A lot of underdog picks there. Jags, he picked over the Chiefs. I, I, yeah, I, mean, I just I, don't think that's gonna happen. I don't see it, but then again, Trevor Lawrence hasn't lost on Saturday in his entire football career. Even in Did high school? Did you see that? 
even in high school. He's never lost on he's a Saturday? He's never lost on a Saturday. He has two losses in college, and it was on a Friday, and then the national championship on a Monday. But he's never lost on a Saturday, and he's undefeated in high school. Well, looks like I'm a Jags fan then. And Come then. On, you, you still can't bet against Mahomes, eh? Uh, I don't know. I, I'll be curious to see in the next decade how long that dynasty is going to last. The Mahomes? Yeah. Yeah, especially if he doesn't have. He has to do it all himself. Yeah. So I, it'll just be interesting to see with Tyreek Hill getting traded to the Dolphins. But, I mean, the Chiefs still went out and got, I think it was Pacheco, I, Isaiah yeah. Pacheco. And, I mean, six-round pick, and he plays almost identical to Tyreek Hill. So credit to them, I guess, for getting talent and I think, from the draft. I think they got a pick with that Tyreek Hill trade. So they, Yeah, who would you draft if you're the Chiefs, if you're looking for a slot receiver that's pretty quick, and that can run those deep routes for Mahomes. I don't know what I don't know what pick number they're at. Yeah, I, um, I'm curious to see. Slot receiver. I yeah, mean, I just think receiver in general. I mean, Jordan Addison, USC. Quentin Johnston. Quentin Johnston is good. He is good. He'll get drafted pretty high. Trey Palmer. Up. Straight out of Nebraska. Eh. Yeah, he, he's a good player. He had a great game against Purdue. He did. I mean, yeah, and that's not even, I mean, with a quarterback at the caliber of Mahomes, I don't know what he could, he could do. But I think Jordan Addison and Quentin Johnson has got to be that, that guy. That, I think Quentin Johnson is projected to get the first receiver gone, but... Then he had the Bengals winning it, which that that's probably the hardest one to pick in my opinion. It is. Bengals, Bills. Bengals upset the Chiefs last year at Arrowhead, which seemed, you know, impossible at the time after that insane comeback just a week earlier against the Bills. Well, we're going to pause the NFL talk because it's basketball time. Second half is underway here at the Activity Center. If you're just tuning in, you're curious about the girls program, you can go back, fast forward a couple minutes where we interviewed Coach Ritter of the girls team to see what he had to say as his squad nears the postseason. You want some uh, things to watch for this next half? Yeah. Logan Egan has three personal fouls for the, the Knights. Uh, Jack Faust with two for the Shamrocks. That was an impressive finish right there. <laughs> Lindhorst with it now. To Pellon. Scotus going to maintain possession. It would definitely help Scotus's cause if one of the big guys on Bergen fouled out. It would definitely. And they don't even have to foul out at this point. If Egan gets a foul here early, he's going to be on the bench for a while. Driving attempt there from Faust, but just unlucky bounce. Looks like Faust is out is without his lucky headband. Well, his white one is on his uh, fat head. I do not know where his green one is. Another charge. Pellon with his second one. That's Nozzle's third. That's that would be huge for the Shamrocks if he'd have to sit some of this game. Hang with it now. Out to Wemhoff. A spot opened up there in the 2-3 defense and screams for a foul. But refs don't call for it. Just a scrum in the middle of the court. It's going to be a jump ball. Alternating possession is going to give it to Bergen. That looks going to be a timeout, I think. 
Excuse me, my fault. Nick here has my back. He's basketball expert, 101, PhD in basketball stuff. Not exactly. But <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel right here on SCOTUS Central Catholic Media. We have a lot of new content, broadcasting videos from the marketing class here. There's replay of the football games from this year as well, where yours truly announced those as well. So go back and listen to those if you're curious. Pellon, very athletic catch there. Shamrock's down by 10. They're gonna need a spectacular third quarter here to try to get back into this game. Inside to Faust, out to Lindhorst. Lindhorst, jumper, no good. That's, that's kind of his bread and butter shot yes, right he there. He makes that one. Inside to Egan, he was left wide open. And the Knights capitalize on it. Hang headed the other way. Great finish from him. Had a lot of pressure in his face, but got the two-pointer to fall. Egan thought about the three. Out to Brainerd. Brainerd inside to Egan. Out to Schmidt. Schmidt back inside to Egan. Faust on the defense, but doesn't do enough. Egan puts the Knights ahead by 12. Off with it, over to Lindhorst. Faust inside, got it. It seems that the plan of attack for this 2-3 defense is just those, those floaters in that soft spot in the middle of the defense. Three of those have fallen for the Shamrocks, very successful for, the, for them. Yes, that's the way to attack that 2-3 that when that middle is wide open. Egan, inside, no good. Hang headed the other way. Drives against Brainerd, looking for somebody to pass to. Finds Faust. Faust with it now, that soft spot once again. Floater no good, gets his own rebound. And a nice finish for him. Cuts the lead to eight. Four thirty left in this third quarter. Not a lot of turnovers on Bergen's part for Scotus to capitalize on. Scotus takes a full Substitutions for Archbishop Bergen number twenty-four, Gavin Bailey for Scotus number two, Blake Medley and number ten, Jude McGuire. Four thirty left in the third quarter. Scotus down by eight. Now. With the remaining eight teams, who do you have in the Super Bowl? If, if you would have to choose. Do you know what you're at here? Here are the options. AFC side, I'm going to have to pick the Bills. I think the Bengals. Ah, we just can't agree on that one game. I guess we'll just agree to disagree and on the I'll, NFC I'll, side. Here's what, I, here's what I agree with you, is the winner of that game is in Okay. The and then I would say... 49ers. The, the Niners, yep. Should be a good Super Bowl this year. This week has flown by. I mean, two snow days this week was just extremely nice. It was. Today felt like a Monday. Yeah, just... Kind of odd how this week worked out. How was your day today, Nick? Anything special happen? No, nothing special. It was a good day. Just a nice day in heaven here at SCOTUS. So if you have anybody, any younger kids that are entering high school, please check this school out. You will not regret it. It's an amazing place to learn both spiritually, academically, and physically. So check it out, the admissions button's on the Scotus Central Catholic website. Travel called 
on Faust. It's, uh, I just feel like SCOTUS is going to have to get a really big momentum swing from beyond the arc. I think they Either are. from Hang or Pelon or something here in the next 347 or this game could start, could, could begin to uh, slip away. Well, they switched back to man, which is good in my opinion. The 2 3 was getting, or the 1 3 1 was getting torn up. Ah, I. Gavin Baker is going to head to the line. Six foot two point guard for the Knights. I don't know about that foul tip. Seems like he was falling over already to me. Way more fouls in the Battle Creek game. First one's good for Baker. This 2 3. I feel like you can find some uh, space out on the wing as well. Yeah, the wing and the the wing and the middle of the paint are really your. And once in a while, you'll get a shot on the baseline, but you really have to swing it fast. I feel like Hang is due here. I think he's going to get some three pointers, maybe at the end of this quarter. Scotus in desperate need of a momentum swing. Faust with the soft spot. Nice finish from him. That's been three floaters so far in that the middle of the court, of the paint, excuse me. Nozzle for three. Nozzle banks it in. Bergen up 41-28. 3.05 left in the third quarter. That's a 13-point lead at about the same time Lakeview had their 13 point lead third quarter. So Shamrocks are more than capable of coming back in this game. But impact player there for Nick. Nozzle with a three pointer there. Extends it to 13 points. For the Shamrocks you would stay in the man and then on the offensive side what would you be preaching to the guys right now I think Jack's found lots of success with that floater so I think if you keep feeding it to him eventually they're going to have to crash on that and then you maybe get a kick out to Jackson or Cohen on the arc Hell on with it out to McGuire Wemhoff did really well there to keep the ball on Scotus's half. McGuire with an open look. Doesn't end up shooting it. It's gonna be Bergen ball. Had an open look there, decided to find another option. Roberts checks into the game. Senior for the Shamrocks. Brainerd with it. Out to Pruss. Pruss over to Baker. Inside to Weinert. Out to Brainerd. Brainerd for three. No good. Rebounded by Baker. Pruss with it now. Pruss thought about shooting the three. Now went with it. Out to Nozzle. Nozzle went for three. No good. Wemhoff headed the other way. Looks like they kind of have adapted their 2-3 so that Jack's always guarded. Great, Great pass there from Blake Wemhoff to brother Max Wemhoff. The lead's now just 11. Rebounded by Max. Great move there from Nozzle, but Baker couldn't hit the triple. Pellon with it. Now Wemhoff. Wemhoff to Pellon. Pellon for three. 
is good. I think that's the three-pointer that's going to jumpstart this offense. The lead's now to eight. What offense are you seeing Bergen running right now? Really, I think they're just doing a lot of cutting. Which is, I don't know. Scotus calls it five game. Um, but they do, oh no, sorry, they do, I have seen some pick and rolls. But nothing really special. That adapted defense from Bergen's shut down Faust here at the end of the third quarter, but it opened up a three pointer there for Pellon. Yep. Fifty two point two seconds left in the third quarter. Bergen leads the Shamrocks forty one thirty three. Press with it now, guarded by Lindhorst. Out to Brainerd. Now went with it. So they actually they're actually running. Well they're literally running our uh, our offense. They're running Butler. Great defense there from Wemhoff. Maybe they can cut this eight point lead. Blake with it. Finds that soft spot in the middle of that 2 3. This is a possession. You kind of need a basket. Nice. nice. Great basket there from Max Wemhoff. Another Wemhoff. Hopefully, Wemhoff. Bergen doesn't get a late bucket here at the end of the third period and they don't so SCOTUS with a big third quarter SCOTUS with a great third quarter and I guess the pattern is going to hold efficient first quarter struggling second quarter but third quarters are always looking good for the Shamrocks yes I think this might this might be a little bit of a different game if they they went back to that man a little sooner. Now the turnovers for the Shamrocks, which they really do rely on late in the second half, just really haven't been there. Yeah, that points off turnovers has not been there tonight. As the Battle Creek game, the third quarter just seemed like Battle Creek really struggled with the 1-3-1. Turned the ball over a lot, and the Shamrocks just built an 11, or a 10 to 11 point lead. And but they did well at the end. The last two minutes, it they were down by 13 at one point, and it looked like the game was going to get out of hand. So final period. I still feel like the Shamrocks are due from the three-point line. I think Hangs do. Uh, yeah, he is in there. The best case scenario for the Shamrocks is if Hang gets on a streak. He helped them win that GICC match at the beginning of the year. Yeah, Don't, oh yeah, go ahead. I believe what the guys were saying is that right now they're lined up to play GICC in the first round of conference. Yeah. Unfortunate, unfortunate miss there for Max. Nozzle with it. Out to Schmidt. Nozzle with three fouls, I believe. Three-pointer there for Egan. Now Wemhoff with it. That was a big bucket there for the Knights. Make this lead nine. Pellon inside. No good. Tipped by Wemhoff. Collected by Nozzle. Nozzle dri driving the other way. Missed an open layup. Now hang with it. Out to Pellon. Pellon to Blake. Wemhoff. Wemhoff for three. No good. Rebounded by Brainerd. A flurry of activity ends with no points for the Shamrocks. 
that three-pointer really would have sparked something. Yes, it definitely would have. Shamrocks might start pressing on made baskets here. Bergen, I can see them kind of slowing the pace down. I'm gonna try to run this clock down to triple zeros. Blake checks out. Owen Lindhorst checks in. He's been relatively quiet this game. He's averaging six points per game. Really efficient with the jumpers, but they haven't been falling for him tonight. Nozzle with it now. A little shake and bake. Now Schmidt with it. Back to Brainerd, inside to Egan. The and one, no, excuse me. Foul, offensive foul. I, I think they might have called it travel. I didn't see any anybody go to the table. It looked like foul. the Bergen fans were cheering for a second. Oh, turnover there from Lindhorst. Press headed the other way. Very nice play from the guard. Hang with it. Skotis in dire need of a spark. Hang for three. No good. But they're going to keep possession. Down by 11. 5.27 left in the fourth period. Pelon thought about a quick three inside to Max. Max out to hang. Foul called on Schmidt. Correction, Brainerd with the foul. Kind of different from the first half, but not a lot of fouls this half. No, not, not at all. Pelon for three. No good. Scotus continues to struggle from the three-point line, but great defense there. And hustle from Owen Lindhorst to get a possession back for the Shamrocks. Hang with the two-pointer. No good. Foul called on Scotus. Bergen ball. They're up by 11. 5.03 left in the fourth period. I didn't see what the call was. It was a push. I didn't see that. I didn't see the foul happen. Now Pruss with it. Over to Brainerd, back to Schmidt. To Pruss inside to Egan. Great hustle there. And determination from Jack Faust to strip him of the basketball. Lindhorst inside. Great. Nice two pointer from him. It's exactly what the doctor ordered. Scotus now down by nine. And I bet they come out of this timeout with a press, some sort of press. They're gonna have to force some turnovers. Which and they, hopefully, done it in the past, so. hopefully get some uh, three pointers fallen here in the last 433. Thir well, Nick, I wanna thank you for announcing these with me. It's nice that you agreed to do this back in December. If you wouldn't have agreed to it, I probably wouldn't have done it. So thank you of course. For, for putting up with me, I guess. Nope, time's flying by. Just yesterday, it felt like I was in seventh grade. Now I'm a senior. Kind of crazy. It is crazy how, ta how fast time flies. Yeah, it just... There's a lot of, you know, when I was a seventh grader and just the, the seniors from that 2016 class, just 2018, how, you mean? Well, no, I mean oh. seventh grade, but then like sixth and fifth grade, just they seem larger than life. And now I'm a senior, I'm like, 
I just still feel like I'm small compared to them. I think we still are. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe it's actually just the truth, but no, it's been a great time. Nice finish there from Pruss. Lead back to 11. Faust with it. Inside to Wemhoff. Working against two Knights. Gets the job done. Foul called on Lindhorst. 3.53 left. So if SCOTUS loses this game, they're going to drop to 9 and 5. If Bergen wins, they're going to improve to 8 and 6. SCOTUS' next game. Be Boone Central tomorrow, rescheduled. Would be Boone Central rescheduled from Thursday. Great steal there from Hang. Hang racing to the basket. Draws some great contact. Hopefully, the Shamrocks can cut into this nine point lead. Hang is. So SCOTUS will play Boone Central on the 21st, then their conference tournament. Then on February 3rd, they're going to play Bishop Newman. They're seven and six. And then just a day later, they're going to, and then Carney Catholic on February 4th. This will be a tough one. Carney Catholic five and nine on oh, the year. Really? Lakeview. Is what day? Is. February 11th and unfortunately I don't think I will be able to call that game. Oh that's alright. We gotta get that student session going for the rivalry game. And then they're going to end this regular season at Aquinas Catholic. They're 6-6 six six currently. But Scotus just sitting at 14th in power points. Really on the cusp of Hopefully, getting a good draw in the district final if they win, if they uh, win out in the sub district tournament. It would be an incredible achievement for this young team to qualify for state. But right now, we have to stay in the present because they're down by eight to Archbishop Bergen. And on the other side, I think they will be, don't quote me on it, but I believe they'll go in to the sub-districts as the one seed. Bergen has their, oh, Bergen's in our conference. So oh, they I, are. They will be at our conference tournament hosted by Boys Town. Very interesting, uh, the teams that are headed to this tournament. SCOTUS is going to have the the two seed on based upon record. Uh, that might change, though. That could change. Especially after this, this game, since they're in conference. Foul by Owen Lindhorst. <laughs> And then Bergen's going to play Omaha Concordia on the 31st. Press inside. No good. Rebounded by Wemhoff. Collected by Hank. 3.14 left in the last period of this match. Hang inside. Ah, oh, doesn't fall for him. Rebounded there from Went. Scotus down by eight, Bergen clinging to an eight point lead. Scotus had an opportunity to cut the lead to six, but Hang 
with a difficult finish couldn't get the ball to fall. So timeout on the court. And we're going to take a timeout with them. Be back in 30 seconds. Dedicated. Cutting edge. Focused. Fearless. Diverse. Dynamic. Resilient. Determined. Bold. Advanced. Independent. Committed. Courageous. Driven. Proud. Strong. From the moment you discovered your family was about to get bigger, to the very first time you heard that tiny heartbeat, to your water breaking, to the moment you held your precious newborn in your arms. We've been here for you. Columbus Community Welcome Hospital. back. 2.53 left in the fourth quarter. Bergen up by eight. Foul by Owen Lindhorst. Four for him. We just heard that Bergen's out of timeouts. How, how could that factor in at the end of this game? Well, if they have a lead, it really shouldn't. Um, the only other way it would be if they want to keep that possession arrow, they will not have a chance to call timeout anymore. Great rebound there from Max. This match could go down to the wire if the Shamrocks could find a way to get a basket here. Faust working on Egan. Nice shot from him. That's exactly what the Shamrocks needed. Now they're down by six. Lindhorst has got to be careful. He has four fouls right now. A lot of shouts for travel, but... So Owen Lindhorst is gonna foul out. Blake Wemhoff checks in the game. Skoda is still very much alive. Russ misses his first. So Shamrocks with possession down by six. Under 2.30 left in this game. It's really becoming eerily similar to the Hastings St. Cecilia game. Oh, that would have really changed things if Hang could have made that one. But it doesn't fall. Bergen takes possession. Nozzle with it, double team by Wemhoff and Faust, but Wemhoff's gonna pick up the turnover and it's a charge is called on Max Wemhoff. And this SCOTUS crowd definitely doesn't like that call. That really could have changed the course of this game. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but that was not a very good call there. Um, his feet were clearly moving, and then there was a flop. Oh, great turnover. I guess the ball never lies. It does not. And Skotis gets the ball right back. Faust, nice pass to Wemhoff. Great two-pointer from him. The Shamrock's down by four. Pruss with it now, driving against Pellon. It's getting chaotic in here. It's gonna go in, in the Shamrock's favor. Oh my goodness. I mean, if you're gonna call the one down here, you gotta call that one down there. You know? <laughs> we have, if you guys were wondering, we have instant replay up here, so we get to see the action a little bit afterwards as well. So now Shamrock's down by four. Faust inside, out to Pellon. Pellon for three, got it! Cohen Pellon puts the Shamrock's within one. Insane pass there 
from Nozzle. Nozzle, open three, decides to drive inside. Blocked by Faust. Oh my goodness. How the tables have turned here in the last half of this quarter is insane. And the momentum is now with the share marks, and they have to be selective for their shots, and they have to make sure they get a bucket. That so, is Nozzle's fourth. So the best player on Bergen has his fourth foul. The student section feeding off of this momentum. Do not change the channel, folks. We have a game, I repeat, we have a game here at the activity center. Okay, Dr. Zuha, what are you gonna prescribe for this SCOTUS squad to get a win tonight? Ball security now. You have momentum, you have home court advantage, you need to be secure with the ball, and you need to get a bucket. Wemhoff with it now. Trying to break into this 2-3 defense. Got a push, I think. Yeah, push on, on Went. Went with the push. So now it looks like which SCOTUS is in foul. bonus. Yeah, they are in bonus. That's huge for SCOTUS. SCOTUS down by one. I would expect something to Jack or Max here. Faust collects. Working against Went. Hang for three. Got it! Jackson hang for three. The Shamrock's up by two. And remember, Under Bergen 20 does seconds. not have timeouts left. Bergen, Bergen has, no, has timeouts. no timeouts. And you know the, the guy with the ball is, is going to be down. Going for the shot. Nasal driving inside. Charge! And that's his fifth foul, Ted. That is Nasal fouls foul. out. The Shamrocks get a charge. 11.7 seconds left in this ball game. Oh my goodness, what a momentum change in the last two minutes. And hasn't this place just erupted? The Shamrocks were written off, really. Two minutes ago, no momentum, no shots were falling. Down by eight, with two minutes left, come out here, 10 straight points in the, the last two minutes, just insane. If you look at the scouting court we got, on Nozzle, take charges, and that's his second one of the game, and ends up fouling him out. Hang clutch when he needed to be. So now here, here's the big thing though. To the very first time you heard The Shamrocks are 55 54% as a team from the free throw line. They need to, that cannot happen. Because they're gonna get fouled here. They need to show some efficiency on the foul line. <laughs> on the free throw line, excuse me. So 11.7, Bergen without their best player on the court by far. I, I, think, I think Bergen's gonna play for a steal before a foul. Ball security is a must for the Shamrocks. So you're gonna wanna get it, maybe Cohen, Jackson. Any good free throw shooters, and they do. They get it to Hang. Hang from the free throw line is 77%. So he's the best free throw shooter on the team. That is not who Bergen wanted to be at the line right now. So Hang has a chance here. He gets two shots, right? Or does he have to make uh, his first? He has to make his okay. first. So they're only in bonus. I don't even know if time came off the clock. Point four came off the clock. Point four. No good for Hank. So Bergen within striking distance. Out to Egan. Over to Schmidt. Schmidt for three, no good. Shamrocks win, Shamrocks win the basketball game. A 10-0 run in the last minute 30 gives the Shamrocks a victory.
over rival Archbishop Bergen right here at the Dowd Activity Center, Scotus Central Catholic High School. What a valiant effort from this young squad, saving the best for last. Cohen Pell on with 15 points tonight. So Scotus is definitely going to secure that number two seed in the conference tournament. I would say so because they don't have another conference opponent. Scotus is going to improve to 10 and 4. For some reason, on the NSA website, they had Lincoln Christian as two wins. But they're now going to improve to 10 and 4. Next stop for them is going to be Boone Central tomorrow night. There will be no commentary for that game, but thanks for tuning into this one. This was a fun one to call, a fun one to watch. We will see you, I guess. I, I don't really know. Conference is next week, so no, yeah. nothing next week. So. so it'll be at least a week, maybe 10 days. We'll, we'll see. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Ted Farringer, Nick Zuhl.